Welcome to the Armani Talks YouTube channel, the number one YouTube channel for you to level up your communication skills, learn the art of public speaking, social skills, and personal branding to take your message to the world. For today's episode, we're entering the world of public speaking, and I'm going to give you some guidance on how to open a speech. So a speech is broken down into three different parts. There's the opener, there's the middle, and then there's the end. Just three parts. So what's the issue? The issue is that with the opener, there's a lot of different options. You see, with the middle, it just follows the lead of the opener, and the end, it follows the lead of the middle. So what does the opener follow the lead of? That's where your imagination comes into play. There's plenty of different methods to open a speech, and it is important, don't get me wrong. How you open a speech captures the audience's attention and sets the tone for the rest of your speech. But in reality, the middle and the end of your speech are much more important. But here's the issue. If you're stuck on this one, the least important part, then how are you going to get to the most important parts? In today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to open a speech, and I'm going to break this video down into two different parts. The first part is going to talk about the verbal elements of an opener. You're going to learn about body language, how to calm the nerves down, and how to carry yourself from the seat to the stage. The second part of the video is going to cover the verbal elements of the opener. And this is going to talk about the hook, how you set the tone for the rest of your speech, and psychology regarding the audience. This video is going to cover a lot of different elements, so you can set the tone for the rest of your speech so you're delivering your message like a rock star. If you're ready to dominate your next speech, make sure you drop a like right on below and let us begin. The verbal elements. From the seat all the way to the stage, all this part deal with the opener of the speech. Even before you say a single word, you're influencing the perception of the audience. If you're dragging your feet, if your shoulders are slouched, if you're frowning, if you look defeated from the very get-go, then you're starting off at a very negative perception. You're going to be working your way up the hill for the rest of the speech. That's not what you want. You want your body language to be on point. You want to win the audience over even before you say a single word. If your body is on point, then you are speaking to their eyes. And this way, you start off the speech on a high-leveled perception. What are some good ways to enhance your body language? There's a four-step formula. The first part is your posture. Your posture is huge. Make sure your chest is out, your back is straight, your shoulders are peeled back, and your chin is up. One of the best ways to do this is to picture you're taller than you actually are. So if you're six foot tall, picture that you're six foot five. And when you make this mental transition, you're going to be fixing your posture automatically. This mind hack works. Once you do part one, part two becomes much easier, which is silencing your breath. You shouldn't be able to hear your breath. If you can even remotely hear it, then you're doing it wrong. You need to silence the breath. And the only way that you're going to be able to silence the breath is by making it very, very long. When you make your breath long and it silences, what happens is your diaphragm gets engaged, and when your diaphragm gets engaged, you calm yourself down. It's very hard to do deep breathing if you're stressed out. So what you're doing with step two is you're calming yourself down and telling your brain, yo, calm down with the speech anxiety. I'm good. I'm in a safe spot. And those nerve, nerves are going to turn into a positive perception, which leads me to step three, and this is the smile. The smile is huge because whenever you smile, you release endorphins in your brain and you come off as more competent for the audience. When the audience sees you smiling, or even smirking. Your mouth just needs to be pointed upwards, like that. When your audience sees that, they feel as though you're composed. They feel as though you have done this many times before and they're ready to give their power to you. That's part three. And part four is walking with intention. We had this part in Toastmasters and all Toastmasters clubs do this, where as you're walking on 
to the stage. Whenever the speaker is going up to the stage, the audience is clapping the entire time. So if you're taking 30 seconds to walk up to the stage, the audience is going to be clapping 30 whole seconds. The reason that people do this is number one, to keep you motivated, but two, also to make you mindful of your steps. Don't be dragging your feet, don't be acting like you have nowhere to go. You are about to get on stage and how you walk says a lot about you. One of the mind hacks that you can do for this part is to picture that you're about to pick up a billion dollar check. When you do this, you're walking with some intention. You're not dragging your feet then. All four of these moves, your goal is to do it in harmony. So I highly recommend that you practice these four moves in harmony together as you are practicing for the entire speech. When you're practicing a speech, it's not just the words, it's also the gestures, the body language that you have to practice as well. So in harmony, practice your posture with the smile, with the walking, with the breathing, all at once. It's not too difficult as long as you put conscious effort behind it. As you fix the verbal aspects of the opener, you have gotten part one down. So as you walk on to the stage, now is the moment of truth. You have to say some words. Well, this is the verbal element of the opener, which is broken down into two components. There's the hook and then there's the summary of the destination. So let's break down both parts. The hook, the main job is to get the audience's attention. Here's the thing, you're going to have a lot of people in the audience, physically, but mentally, they're off in la-la land. Some of them, they're thinking about their bills, other people, they're thinking about their pets, other people, they're thinking about that ticket that they just got. They're all over the place. And wouldn't it be a shame if you practice your speech for so long and no one is paying attention? which is why the hook is important. You want to get all the wandering minds and bring it to you. You want to get their attention. There's different ways to do this, and I'll just give you a few ideas. One of the ways is to get their body involved. Raise your hand if. This is a good way to get their body involved because whoever's raising their hand for your if conditional statement will feel engaged and whoever's not raising their hand will still feel engaged because they want to know what your entire speech is about. Another way to get someone's body involved, and I'm sure you've seen this many times before, is look to the person to the left of you. Get their name. Now look to the person to the right of you. Get their name as well. Introduce yourself. And this right here is a way for your audience to get engaged before they bring their attention back to you. For both of these elements, make sure you get their body involved for something that relates to the speech. Don't make two people swap names and your entire speech is about, I don't know, puppies or something, because that doesn't make sense. You want to make sure that the opener relates with the rest of your speech. So that's one way, getting the body involved. Another way is to tell a joke. Tell a joke, because whenever you tell a joke, it loosens up the audience and it breaks the tension. Say you are going into a best man speech, and here's how you open. I heard this joke recently. There was this individual, a wife, and then there was another individual, the husband. The wife goes to the husband and says, husband, you never give me compliments. Ever since we got married, you're always just watching TV. So the husband pays attention, turns off the TV and says, wife, I love you from A, through K. She wonders, what does that mean? Well, the husband starts breaking it down. A, for adorable. B, for beautiful. C, for cute. D, for delightful. E, for elegant. F, for fancy. G, for gorgeous. And H, for hot. And the wife says, oh my God, that was one of the sweetest things you've ever said. But wait a minute. You just went from A to H. What about the rest? And then the husband says, ah, I'm just kidding. At this point, your entire audience is going to bust out laughing. And that's when you say, now that I have your attention, let me transition to the rest of the speech. You don't have to say the transition part, but you just do it. I heard this joke in an actual wedding. And I thought it was hilarious. The entire crowd was paying attention to the speech for the rest of the time. 
Wherever there's humor, there's always attention right after. So if you can leverage humor, you are already winning for your hook. Another thing that you can do is to ask a rhetorical question. Say your speech is about schools and improving the school system. How do you guys feel about the current state of the school system? Can't we do better? By simply asking this question, other people's minds are going to be running. You see, anytime you ask a question, whether the other individual responds or not, the mind is looking to close the loop. So this is a certain hack that will get the audience's attention and they want to know what you have to say next. So these are the hooks. These are just a few elements, but the main intention of the hook is to get the attention on you. So that's the first part. The next part is the summary of the destination. For this element, what you're doing is you're taking some time to let the audience know what your speech is going to be about. Because if you don't give them a clue at all, then they may still pay attention, but the problem is they're going to require a lot more conscious processing power. Picture this, picture your friend comes up to you one day and says, hey, uh, come in my car, come in my car, let's go for a drive. So you're like, yeah, why not, it's one of my friends. You go in the car and he starts driving and driving and driving. After a while, you're going to say to your friend, yo, uh, where are we going? And he doesn't respond. He just keeps on driving and driving and driving. After some time, you're going to be like, bro, where are we going? I got work tomorrow, man. Where's this guy taking me? And he keeps driving and driving and driving. And after some time, you're going to be terrified. You're going to wonder if your friend is a serial killer or something like that. Similar concept in the public speaking world. If you just start talking and talking and talking about the speech without letting your audience know what the speech is about, then they're just going to go on a ride without knowing where they are going. This is why it's important to talk about a few of the main points of the speech and how it's going to benefit them. If you're presenting in an engineering conference, then talk about just the three biggest points of your speech and say why it's going to relate to the audience. Don't assume that the audience knows every point that you're going to be saying. Assume that they don't, and that's when you become more brilliant in terms of the opener. For this part, it's also based off of context. If you're in a best man speech, I'm pretty sure that the audience knows that the entire speech is going to be about the best man. So you don't have to go too detailed in it, but make sure you evaluate the context. And that's about it. Once you get that block for the opener done, that's when you can transition smoothly into your first point of the middle block and the other points within the middle block until you finally summarize the speech and close. See, it doesn't have to be too difficult. First, fix your body, make sure your posture is right, your breath is right, you're smiling, you're walking with some purpose, you're winning the audience over without even saying a word. And then start off with a hook, get their attention, make sure that they're paying attention to the start of the show. And finally, for the opener, you want to make sure that you're giving them an idea of where you are taking them so they can enjoy your speech and they can sit back and relax. Do these steps and I guarantee you, your opener will be fire and it will get a standing ovation. If you enjoyed today's presentation on how to present with confidence and how to open a speech, make sure you check out the Armani Archives, the public speaking edition. Also, I'm going to include another book. It's called No Fear Speaking, which talks about different elements within the public speaking world. Public speaking is one of these skill sets that opens up the doors for different elements in your life. You become more socially charismatic, you start presenting with more swag, and you start raising your hand for questions in class when you know the answer rather than hoping that someone else just answers it. Public speaking is a whirlwind effect and it all starts off with the opener for your speech. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you drop that like and thank you for joining the Armani Talks YouTube channel and I'll catch you next time.